He's going into the Hall of Fame. He's a good friend, Steve Hutchinson. How are you, Hutch? What's up, Rich? How we doing? Oh, bro. Come on now. I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm so happy for you. I know we took you out of a meeting, but I did tell the story of how I learned that you got into the Hall of Fame. I told that right. story a few minutes ago. I hope I didn't embarrass you in front of all your uh, your new oh, no. fellow members. No, no, no. You, you, listen, at, at that point, I don't think you could have done anything to embarrass me. I don't even know. You know, I, I couldn't tell if I was walking. I was walking, you know, six inches above the ground. I, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, I know. You're walking down the hallway with all your other fellow members, and I just saw you. And, um, I, I mean, I knew that meant you got in. And, uh, and, and uh, we just saw the video that Landon, your wife, took of you and your kids. I right. mean, wh- how does it – walk me through your emotions, man. Walk, walk me through them. Oh, at the time or now, because they're not much different. Um, no, at the time it was, you know, the video says it all. I think, um, you, you know, and I, I kind of heard you, uh, the back end of you talking about why you to get me last a little bit, um, <laughs> yeah, right. you, you, you know, I, I, they stagger us, you know, the pro the, the hall does a good job of staggering the guys so that when somebody gets good news, they're not next to a guy that doesn't get bad news. And, and you can imagine why. And so, um, I knew I was on the 15th floor. I just didn't know if there were any guys, but I didn't know what order, what rhyme or reason, you know? Um, and so it was, you know, of course, you know, I'm a schedule guy. So I'm a schedule. So be in your room at this time and you'll know between two 30 and three 30 either way. And so here it is three 35 when I get the knock. So those last seven or eight minutes were, were, uh, they seem like an eternity. <sighs> wow. Now and, and, and I've, do they? Do you tell, or do they tell the the hotel staff? Don't like offer turn down service. Don't go in new, anywhere near your tour or anything you know, like I, that. I would assume. I would assume they do. <laughs> um, when we, you know, I, I got up early that morning. As I'm you sure. imagine, hard hard time sleeping, and so uh, I, um, my wife and I grabbed a cup of coffee in the lobby, and um, I went to the front desk and I said, "Hey, just could you do me a favor and make sure that they clean my." room service my room earlier we're going out now so i just wanted right. i didn't want to make sure yeah. there was any but i have heard stories where uh there there was a knock on the door um in the past few years where it was it was you know um you know housekeeping oh. wanting to know if they needed towels or something so that i i wanted to make sure that 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 didn't happen to me <laughs> But it didn't happen. You got David Baker knocking on your door. Who did you think of outside of your family uh, first of Steve? You he- know, it, it's really it's a, it's a it's it's hard to explain. You, you, they say you're going to think of you know. I think Coach Cower said it best. He said that when you when I when I got when David came and surprised him on set, the first thing he thought of is when he was a kid and and like you know you don't think of like. You know, hoist, he didn't think of the hoist in the Super Bowl trophy. He didn't think about the the the, the you know the grind of two days. It was, you know, his mom driving him to practice as a kid. And I think what he meant by that was you you almost have a flash of. For me, I started playing this game when I was six years old, and uh, you know, I, I retired. At, I think I was thirty six, and so it's almost like in an instant, the flash of everything and and really it was when i was a kid and, and it's like how far you've come to get to this point that's the first thing you go to um it's 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 weird it's a it's a it, it really is just kind of a, a snapshot of everything all at once and what is your proudest accomplishment now that you can actually look back and say okay uh this is a, now officially a hall of fame career and you can now legitimately look back you can't say well you know when it's all over when i get right. to this spot now you can legitimately look back and say this is what i'm proud of i'm proud of this steve i think i think it's everything i've done along the way to get to that point you know when when you when you play the game especially at, at in the nfl really all you all you ever want is respect from the guys that came before you um that you just want to you know your, your dream is to be sitting at a function and have a guy that you looked up to come up to you and say, you know what? That was a hell of a career. You you played the game the right way. That to me, that's the ultimate compliment you can get. You know, you're going to have your family, no matter what, say, wow, you did a great job, whether you're not got beat for five sacks in a game, you know, that's, that's a given, right? But when you have a guy that you respect, pay respect to you. And to me, um, this is the ultimate, you know, 
uh, pat on the back from, from that standpoint where, you know, you're in that club and it's just, it's, you have to do everything right and you have to give it everything you got. And any, any time you put your hand on the ground, anytime you strap up that helmet in order to get to this point, and, and it just kind of, kind of confirms that I did it that way. Now, I, I um, you know, I, I, I went to a Super Bowl and lost, um, you know, played in a, in a tough NFC championship game, one game away in 09 with the Vikings and, um, you know, lost to New Orleans. So I don't have that hardware um, for the Super Bowl, which is, you know, everybody's goal when you start playing this game. Um, and so there was a little bit of a hole. There was a void left. Uh, you know, I, I felt that, you know, I gave it my all, and, and, and but I didn't have anything really to show for it other than, a you know, a 12-year career. And, and, and at the end of the day, when that knock came, it was like, man, it just kind of, in my eyes, it, 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 would, it legitimized it for me. It gave me closure. And um, it, it just, you know, it, 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 it was great. Steve Hutchinson, Hall of Fame inductee for the 2020 class right here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. And then after I saw you in that hallway at Honors and then you got uh, introduced uh, on the stage, and this has been a neat thing the last several Honors years, and this is definitely not planned, is that once the entire class that's, uh, that's coming is introduced, every Hall of Famer that's in the audience gets up and walks on the stage. Uh, who came up to you? Yeah. What was that moment like, Steve? Well, for the you? first one, I mean, you, 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 all of a sudden these, these guys flood the stage, you know, and, and the first one, and, and you know, I, we've had conversations over the last couple of years at, at the Merlin Olsen luncheon and some of these on site at the Super Bowl leading up to the vote and, and, and over the Super Bowl weekend. The first one was, you know, Steve Largent. And he ran right up to me. And, you know, it's, it's really cool because unlike some of these other teams, um, that have a, a rich, you know, um, story tradition of Hall of Famers. You know, the Seahawks, we've only got we only got a couple of them, you know. And, and I was fortunate to be in two amazing, uh, be a part of two amazing, outstanding um, organizations. And, and um, for the majority, I, I spent a year in Tennessee at the end, but, but for the majority of my career, uh, you know, Seattle and, and Minnesota, as you know. And so Largent came up, and then then I think after that. The next one was Ladania, and that was special because Ladania and I came out. We were drafted the same year. We we trained with the same agent. We trained together prior to the combine and the draft and all that. And and he came up, and and that was special. And then and then John Randall, I spent and I learned how to play the game going against every day in practice. My first three years, you know, he came up, and then and then uh, man, Ray Lewis was there, and you know, we my first year, we were finalists together two years ago, and. And Bruce Matthews, who, you know, I think is the best to play the position, you know, he came up and he coached me in Tennessee my last year. And it's just, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable to be flooded with all the guys that you, like I said earlier, you grew up watching the guys you respected, you know, man, these are the best guys to ever do it. And they come up and give you a hug and congratulate you. And it's like, you know, it's pretty overwhelming because, in the span of that hour, there's, there's a lot to say. I that, know. You know, right, and then comes the Monday sort of orientation with you and your your uh, your class, right? And then, did, did, right, and then that's when you start talking about your bust and all that business. Yeah, but, I mean, that's when it kind of gets kind of gets real. You start does. coming down a little bit. But I got to tell you, I got to tell you a, a cool, funny story about that too. Okay. So you go to the orientation, and um, and that's that's kind of they put you, you know, they put they have you. David Baker wants every guy to come up and, and, and you know, we, we've got a, sh a closed room and he wants you to give a little t talk about something where you can't about yourself or something you can't really read in a bio. Mm -hmm. And so all the, all the, um, the guys stood up and it was a centennial class along with the five of us. And you stand up and say a little tidbit and there's some hall of famers in the room that are helping us with orientation. And of course the rest of the, the hall staff from, from Canton is there. So it's, it's a, it's a pretty good, size room and um that's when they also when, when it's your turn they put your picture on the on the overhead they say your name and then that's when you find out what number you are um i am num i am hall of famer number 335 which i thought it was ironic because that's the time david baker knocked on my door come on come on yeah. come on yeah i just i was like oh you gotta be kidding me this is this is meant to be right yeah um yeah so it's, it, i thought it was a little weird Wow. 
So uh, yeah. what what era hutch are we going to get on the bust? We're going to get the flow. We're going to get a little bit of a mullet. What are we going to get? What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I think I got to go with the hair. You know, I, it's funny, and I don't know how many people know this story, but when when I came out of Michigan, um, you know, I, you can you can look up my uh, my my combine picture, my my Michigan picture. I, I was high and tight with the short hair and the kind of the little flat top and the goatee, and so I played my rookie year, and, and uh-huh. you know. I had a good rookie year, and then the second year I, I I got cut short. I had an injury, but so I'm training. I'm coming back and trying to get ready for the for the next season. And I'm I'm looking. I'm going, man. You know what? All these pro you know Pro Bowl guys, these guys that make the the Pro Bowl. I'm like, they all look mean. You know, I, I mean, they just got the long hair and the beard and that. So I'm like, I'm gonna grow my hair out. And I'm gonna get a beard, and maybe that'll help me get to the Pro Bowl. And then next year I went to the Pro Bowl, and then I went seven straight. So I think I'm gonna have to give a little bit of a. A little bit of a uh, the flow in, in the beard going. I, I, that's just what I'm thinking now. But I don't know. We'll have to see what it looks like once once the uh, once we get some renditions. All right. And before I let you go, Steve, a couple more with Steve Hutchinson, Hall of Fame inductee here on the Rich Eisen Show. You know, the John Madden says the busts talk to each other when the lights go out. Right. Best you can tell me. Right. Now, best you can tell me, what is your bust and Brett Favre's bust going to say to each other when the lights go out, Steve? What's going to happen there? <laughs> Um, you know what? I, you know what it's going to say? It's mm-hmm. going to say, uh, so Brett and I, uh, the two years we were together, mm-hmm. we, we happen to always, we, we always sat next to each other on the plane going to away games. Okay. And, um, there was this, we did crossword puzzles, um, on the, on the plane. And okay. then we went, you know, and then we, there was an app on, on the, the phone called Sporkle. It's like a trivia app. Mm-hmm. And Brett's in the trivia. He, he's always, you know, Brett, Brett plays the all shucks uh, Mississippi guy, but Brett's Brett's a very intelligent person. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know if he wants everybody to know him that, but 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 he is, and so he can he can whip out a crossword puzzle. He can, he, so we would play this game Sporkle and play all these random trivia mm-hmm. games all the time. And uh, I think if if our busts are going to talk once mm-hmm. they're done cleaning, and they turn the lights off at night. We're just going to be we're going to we're going to have some way to pull up random trivia, and and we're going to just we're going to quiz each other. That's it. <laughs> that's amazing. That's what we're gonna do. That's okay. what we do. We pass time, you know. We we we, 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 we just we, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. We might talk about how I flew down. We might talk about how I flew down one time and, and try to kidnap him to bring yeah. him back to Minnesota. But, I heard about that one. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. that I yeah. heard about that. that. That's by the way, that's Hall of Fame worthy in we itself, or, Steve. We may or may not have had a laugh about that. Uh, yeah, and a duck, night and a duck uh, blind or something. Oh yeah, you talked about that yeah. that night. Yeah, we might we might you know Brett he he. he uh, he might have brought that up Saturday night. We after the show, and we all went back to the hotel, and, and that we happened to be eating dinner at the same same restaurant. Mm-hmm. And of course, he came over, and we were talking about that a little bit. And uh, it's funny. I mean, it's 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 crazy the things you do for this game, right? It's amazing. And um, and before the last one for you, I'm going to go here, Steve. I'm going to go here. A lot of folks may yeah. not know. When was the first time you met your wife, Steve? When did you meet your wife? Eighth grade. Eighth, eighth grade, grade Steve. Eighth grade English class, and uh, she was picking up uh, attendance cards. And so she just had transferred. I guess that was that, that summer she transferred as early in the year, and I really hadn't seen her yet. And she came in, and I said, you know what? kind of like that one. And then here we are. Uh, That's right. Here so, we are. We're, we're, you know, and so married, two kids, and uh, – Still going strong. Eighth grade. So folks may not realize you're not the only one going into Canton, man. It's her too. Yeah. She was there every well, step she, of the she's way. Gonna go. Yeah, she's gonna. No, I mean like it's go in this is her hall. This, this is her Hall of Fame moment too. So what does this mean for her yeah. and the family that we saw in that video? Well, I mean, Steve. she's been there. I mean, a lot of people say, well, you know, this one's she's been there from the beginning. This one has literally been there. My wife has been there from the beginning. She's been through all the surgeries, all the you know, all the, the 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 not glorious things about the league that behind the curtains, you know, when when you when you you know you you play so many seasons, and I, I can't I can't tell you how many times I've held off surgeries on shoulders till after the season to make it through, and then you know it's like you know you know it's this time for vacation, this time for this. Well, now I'm getting a surgery, and I'm laid up on the couch, and she's running the to the to the pharmacy to get refills on this or she's you know changing bandages and and you know it's it's she's been through it all i mean the the the, the moving the, the moving from seattle you know moving from florida to seattle and then just at the drop of a hat 
you know, picking up and moving to Minnesota and then moving to Tennessee and, and taking the kids and, and, you know, making sure that um, everything from the, from the standpoint of the house and, and everything that, so when I came home from work, you know, it was, we were, we, we, it was a machine, you know, and that, and that, and it's just as much her as, as, as it is me, because if I didn't have the support at home, it, you know, I, who knows, you know, and so it, it, it very, very much true. It is. It's just as much for her. So I think that's why it was as emotional for her as it was for, for me when that knock happened. Mm. At 335 and Pro Football Hall of Famer number 335, Steve Hutchinson, thank you for calling in. I love you, my man. I'm very, very yeah, thrilled buddy, for you I, and Landon and your kids and, and all of all the Hutchinsons. And you're all, everybody yeah, has been. I love been, you too, Rich. I mean, it's, you know, it's we've come a long way, you know, and um, remember back, you know, years ago, you, you emceeing the, our golf tournament back at. Oh, yeah. Back in, in Michigan, Michigan. and, yep. and, and uh, I mean, just, you know, talking about this at some point and, you know, it's like back then it's like, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a million miles away and, and now here it is. So I know. Uh, you've been there for, you know, a big part of it and along the way and Azul over at the Pro Bowl, all our parties <laughs> and late night, late night <laughs> drinks at the, by the pool, you yep. know. Yep. Pondering life. Uh, <laughs> and then that one time yeah. in San Diego where you keep perpetuating yeah, the myth one, that I yeah. went and you took a microphone out of an elderly, elderly man's hand on a karaoke stage that Brockman says happened. And I seen, swear, I mean, I've on. never seen nope. you so mad <laughs> as a, when a, to, a guy tried to trump you on stage at a karaoke <laughs> bar when you're trying to sing a little uh, a little Sinatra and uh, oh, and you know I, I, I was like the, the, you, I mean I've never seen anybody take karaoke so serious and I will never do that to, <laughs> trust me I will never do that to you hey Steve one day I'll get the knock on the door for karaoke hall of fame and you'll be there when we go in together okay <laughs> absolutely <laughs> take care of yourself absolutely. man take care of yourself best All of right. landed take care brother Congrats. That's Steve Hutchinson. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.